Good morning, Calvary. So great to have you here. My name is Robert. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day here today. You know, the last few days we've been following the story of Joseph in the book of Genesis. And we've seen this, this unfortunate downward pattern of his life and what he's experienced. He was sold as a slave by his brothers after they thought about murdering him. Then he was framed by his boss's wife because he wouldn't sleep with her. And then he found himself in prison. And while there, there was some hope that he may get out. He helped some of his fellow prisoners. Um, but in chapter 40, it ends by telling us uh, that the cupbearer that Joseph had helped forgot about Joseph and did not put in a good word for him with Pharaoh. Now, in chapter 41, where we'll be today, it opens with a timeline. It says it's been two full years since Joseph helped the cupbearer and was forgotten about. For two years, he was in prison after thinking he may have a way out. He may have some hope. And we're brought to this moment in time because Pharaoh has had some dreams that trouble him. No one around him can understand what they mean or, or what he should do with them. And in this moment, two years later, the cupbearer finally remembers Joseph. As a side note, uh, I'm guilty of forgetting to follow up with people. Uh, I intend to get back with people and call them back or return their text or email. And as like, I like to say something shiny pops up and distracts me, but two years? That's a bit crazy. So the cupbearer, though, finally remembers Joseph and tells Pharaoh, hey, I have someone that interpreted some dreams for me when I was in prison. We should summon him to see if he can interpret your dreams. So they go and get Joseph, and Joseph gets cleaned up and brought before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh asks him to interpret the dream. And I love, Pharaoh, or I love Joseph's answer to Pharaoh, because in verse 16, he tells Pharaoh that he can't interpret it, but that God can now, this is a pretty amazing and interesting response, and one that also shows a lot of spiritual maturity and humility that may have been previously lacking in Joseph's life. See, here he was in front of the most powerful man in that area of the world, and he replies that he can't do what Pharaoh asked of him, but that God could. And Pharaoh explains in the dream that he had been having, and Joseph answers with what they meant. God had given Joseph the, the, uh, the answer that Pharaoh was looking for. And it was a warning from God that for the next seven years, there were, the food harvest would be plentiful, that they would have food overflowing, but that the next seven years would be a famine. And Joseph then explained that Pharaoh should put leaders in place to administrate a 20% collection on food to build food reserves during the good years, so they would have food to give back to the people when the famine came and people were starving. And Pharaoh was discerning and could see that Joseph was the right man because God was with him. In turn, he put Joseph in command of not only the food collection, but he put him in a place where he was in second in command of all of Egypt. And we'll hear more about this promotion and, and what happens tomorrow, but think about this. In just a few short hours, Joseph went from prisoner in jail to second in command of all of Egypt. Now, so many things we can learn from Joseph, even in this situation, um, but so much that we can also see about God's sovereignty, even when things look bleak for us. Just because things aren't going our way doesn't mean that God is not going to show up and be at work in our life. The question is, will you be like Joseph? Will you live and serve with humility even when things aren't going great? Will you do your best at a job you hate? Will you live with integrity and honesty when those around you encourage you to lie? Will you choose to trust even when your most promising opportunity is taken away? These are all situations that Joseph faced, and his decision was to trust God and live with character, and that allowed God to use him in an amazing way. So today, as you start your day, I pray that you would choose to trust God and to live with character no matter what life throws your way. Because if you're in a place of positivity in life or facing some bleak situations like Joseph, choosing to live with character and integrity will allow God to work through you and show up in amazing ways in your life. Hope this helps today and hope you have a great rest of your day. We'll see you next time.